Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. My good people, to prepare ourselves to offer this mystery of our salvation, let us first of all acknowledge our sinfulness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirm the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship. Grant, we pray, to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the brook of the prophet Daniel. As I, Daniel, watched in my vision, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne, his clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. 
As I watched visions in the night, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the second letter of Peter. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father. When that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well <clears throat> to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. 
The word of the Lord. I thank you. that you be proclaimed the gospel for the Lord and well of the Father and of the Son. and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to Jesus. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But Peter did not know what he was saying. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, the disciples kept silent and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. The account of the transfiguration of Jesus Christ, as recorded in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, is a demonstration to three witnesses 
that Jesus Christ was, in point of fact, exactly who he claimed to be. And in all three accounts of this transfiguration, we are given the names of those three disciples who accompanied Jesus and who stood as the human witnesses to the divine glory manifested by the Lord. They are, of course, Peter, James, and John. The men that the Apostle Paul would later call the three pillars of the church. But notice, there are also three heavenly witnesses. Moses, the giver of the law, Elijah, the supreme prophet, and the voice of God the Father himself coming from heaven. And this is important because Old Testament law, you can find this in Deuteronomy chapter 19, Old Testament law required that three witnesses always be present to attest to any fact that was to be established. So, in the transfiguration of Jesus, the Old Testament law was satisfied, both on earth and in heaven. The very word transfigured is itself a fascinating term. The Greek word the gospel uses here is metamorpho, which means to transform. It's where we get the term metamorphosis. The word here is a verb that means to change into another form, but it also means to change the outside to match the inside. In the case of the transfiguration of Jesus Christ, it means to match the outside with the reality of the inside. In other words, to change the outward appearance of Jesus Christ so that it matches the inward reality of who and what he actually is. Now we know that Christ's divine nature was veiled in human form, according to the letter to the Hebrews. And so in the transfiguration, we are actually getting a glimpse into the divine nature of Jesus Christ. We are seeing the very glory of Almighty God incarnate in his Son. But this transfiguration shows us even more. Because in this transformation, we catch a brief glimpse of the glory of eternal life that is awaiting each and every one of us. We come to understand that we too will be transformed. We too will be transfigured in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, when the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will all be changed. As Christians and as Catholics, we believe that this transformation awaits all who believe and trust in Jesus Christ and are judged to be worthy of heaven, so that we too may one day live in his presence and come to see God face to face. Furthermore, in Christ's transfiguration, we as baptized Christians also find our origin. Because from the very moment that we are baptized into our Lord's death and resurrection, we received a new life into which we are called to grow in holiness. This process is very frequently called divinization or theosis. 
which means the transforming effect of God's divine grace on us, helping us to become literally more like God. You see, in Christ, our human nature actually begins to share in His divine nature. In many ways, it's almost the opposite of the Incarnation, isn't it? Think about it. Jesus, the Word of God, condescended in order to become man and to take our human nature. But because he is also God, our Lord Jesus Christ is able today to do the same to us through our baptism, through our leading of a holy life, and our obedience to his commandments. And so he allows men and women to become like God, to be divinized, granting to all of us who believe in him a share in his own divine life. And if we understand this, then we also get a sneak peek forward to the glorious feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we can appreciate even more its tremendous significance in our lives. Because, brothers and sisters, if we do see our origin in the light of the Transfiguration, then we can also see our destiny in the assumption of our Blessed Lady into heaven. The Blessed Virgin Mary had a singular privilege that no one else has since received. In our Lord's wisdom and at the end of his earthly life, he brought his mother into heaven, body and soul. Now, as we all know, we will not be reunited with our bodies until after the second coming, which is why we say in the Nicene Creed, we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. But our mother Mary was able to enjoy this honor, not only because of her own immaculate life, but so as to give the rest of us this hope as well. My friends, it all connects back so beautifully to what we learned examining the Transfiguration. Mary becomes fully divinized, as we one day will be when we enter through the heavenly gates. And this is why both feasts, the Transfiguration and the Assumption, are so vitally important in the life of the Church. Blessed Mary, a mere creature, has received the fullness of life, and so she is living the life that we are all destined for by God. And since we are also mere creatures, our Blessed Lady strengthens us by her example. In much the same way, our Lord strengthened his apostles by his transfiguration prior to his crucifixion. Indeed, through her assumption, Mary shows unto us the blessed fruit of her womb, Jesus as she was assumed into heaven only by his power. And she also shows us now what awaits those of us who do his will and endeavor to keep his commandments. And this brings us to one last parallel between the transfiguration and the assumption of our Blessed Lady. Look at the words which God the Father speaks to the apostles as they fell on their faces in awe on that mountaintop. This is my Son, my Chosen, 
Listen to him. Now, if you will, juxtapose that with what Mary, the mother of God, said to the servants at the wedding feast at Cana. It says it all. Do whatever he tells you. As we celebrate this Marian day, let us bring our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father in union with Mary, the Mother of God, and our Mother. The response to the petitions is, Christ graciously hear us, we pray that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, will guide and support all who lead God's holy people with her maternal love. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. We pray that the truth of Christ's gospel will transform every earthly sovereignty, authority, and power, and usher in the kingdom of God. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. We pray that all people, especially government leaders, will grow in their reverence for the dignity of human life from conception to natural death. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. We pray that all who have left the faith may, through the intercession of the Queen of Heaven, receive the grace they need to dr be drawn back to the sacraments. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. We pray that this shrine of the Blessed Virgin Mary will be a place of prayer where people from far and near may be drawn to the love of God through the intercession of her Blessed Mother. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. We pray that the devotion to the Blessed Virgin will fill all Christians with an ardent desire for sanctity here on earth and eternal life in heaven hereafter. Christ, hear us. Christ, 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 Christ. We pray that our Blessed Mother will comfort those who are sick and suffering and draw them near to the heart of her Divine Son. Christ, hear us. Christ, 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 Christ. We pray that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the souls of the faithful departed will find eternal joy in the company of the saints in heaven. Christ, hear us. Christ, Christ, hear us. Let us ask our Blessed Lady, Queen of Heaven and Earth, to intercede on our behalf as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here made, <coughs> here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son. By his radiant splendor, cleanse us from the stains of sin through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of, each, of chosen witnesses and filled <coughs> with the greatest splendor that, that bodily form which he shares with all humanity, that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples and that he might show how in, in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what, what was wonderfully sh shone forth first in his head. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name and therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit and graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as 
we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confer with faith and charity your pilgrim church on you, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Douglas our Bishop, Wayne his auxiliary, Matthew here present, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. Your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. <clears throat> to our brother, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. And Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, the first Saturday of September, our next Marian Day, uh, Bishop Lobsinger will be the presider. And on that day, the uh, crown from Rome will be presented uh, to Our Lady. And uh, on the October Marian Day, which will have a somewhat different format, the uh, solemn crowning of the image of Our Lady at the top of the high altar uh, will be presided over by Bishop Crosby. And that is uh, an honor from our Holy Father, the Pope, to have a crowned image in our diocese. Uh, also, the October Marian Day will end with what we're calling the Queen's Tea for the Queen of Heaven. Uh, if you would like to uh, come for the tea after the October Marian Day, there is registration in the parish hall uh, this, right up after the procession this morning. And uh, no fees yet, you can pay on the day, but we just need to have a good idea of how many we're going to have there. Uh, we are, would appreciate a free will offering if you can offer anything for uh, uh, the Marian Day. Just slip your offering into the lock boxes at either of the transept doors. Unfortunately, we've had a few sticky fingers around here, so we can't put the baskets out. Greg, do we have enough carriers? Uh, gentlemen, if any of you are able to assist in the carrying of the statue, uh, for uh, for the procession, please see our Grand Knight, Craig Chamberlain. He's just over to your far left. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you.